Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my May 2019 book haul. I had to think about that one. I've only got one book to get you started with, but uh, let's go ahead and do it. So, this is, this is Lead Your Tribe, Love Your Work by Ryush Patel, founder of Digital Tutors, an entrepreneur's guide to creating a culture that matters. And this is for a client I have where I basically write uh, 2,000 word summaries of some books that, uh, he lists for me. So this one actually has got a very cool interior. I'm liking the look of this. So um, yeah, actually this one looks like one of the cooler ones that I have been assigned. So yeah, happy to get started. Hey, I have got a new parcel. Uh, and this is from Pam McMillan. I don't know if they've sent me this directly. I don't know what this is to be honest. I look tired as well because I am tired. Oh, cool. This is The Space Between Time by Charlie Laidlaw, and uh, this is the author of a book called The Things We Learn When We're Dead, which I was sent for review uh, a few years back and kind of enjoyed, so uh, I said, yeah, I would I would give this a read. It's by Accent Press as well, who normally publish pretty good stuff. So yeah, cool. I wasn't expecting that. I think I'd forgotten I'd asked for it. Hello, uh, I'm going hands-free on the camera with this one because I've only got one new book. I've actually got two new books. I bought Horns by Joe Hill for 49p from a charity shop bargain bin and my girlfriend has stolen it. <laughs> so she does say I'm going to get it back when she's finished reading it, so that's always good. But it, in the meantime, it is at her house in Oxford and I do not have it. So it's technically not part of my collection. However, I did also pick up the Ladybird book of The People Next Door, and this is another one of the Ladybird books for grown-ups. I assume this is also by J.A. Hazley and J.C. Morris. Sorry, J.P. Morris. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a little cute little kid's book for adults about the people next door. Let me read you a sample. Craig thought his neon father Christmas and singing snowman were going to be the talk of the close, but he has to admit the Kyings at number 15 have pulled out all the stops this year. There we go. All right. All right, I've got a few things that have arrived. I ordered this, which is Whispers and Other Strange Stories by Karina Ludmila Kristia. And uh, she is, uh, well, she's been a follower of mine on social media, on YouTube and that sort of thing for a while. And she mentioned she had a new book out. And uh, I thought I would go ahead and get me a copy of it. So it also comes with these kind of illustrations. There is a larger version. So this is the, um, I, would, I guess this is A5. And then I think there's maybe an A4 version as well, which has obviously got bigger, greater detail on, on these illustrations. Uh, let me read you the blurb on here. A profound darkness radiates from this book, yet each whisper conveys an unnatural beauty. Karina has woven a surreal think piece on the soul of horror. So that was Felix Blackwell who wrote In the Devil's Dreams. We've got a little sort of a blurb here. Nightmares and creatures, trapped individuals, childhood ghosts, drops of rain, drops of blood, stars and snowflakes, trees and roots and birds and flames, life, death, and ultimately light. These short, dark stories will captivate the heart and imagination. Hauntings might occur. You have been warned. Front cover art by Vanessa Tavares, interior drawings by Florin Cristea. So there we go. Uh, very cool. So this I'll probably read for uh, Tard and Danes, indie read along. So this is Carrots and Sticks Don't Work, Build a Culture of Employee Engagement with the Principles of Respect. The latest research on what really gets people to go the extra miles. So this is by Paul L. Marciano, PhD. Um, I'm not going to go too much into what this is about. This is another one of the books that I, I'm doing like a Sparknotes style summary for uh, a client of mine. I will say this one's only, you know, looks pretty readable a couple of hundred pages a lot of the ones have been like four or five hundred pages and they've been a bit of a killer um so so this one looks like it's, it's not going to be too difficult to do a 2000 word summary of some of the longer ones are so long that 2000 words only covers the first third of the book and i'm like well i don't know how am i gonna how am i gonna <laughs> stretch it out but I find ways I find ways all right guys I have a lot of stuff because uh, it has been the weekend has been and gone and uh, we went charity shopping in uh, Marlow where I used to work first first though I have these two things that came in the post so here we have Agatha Christie a dumb witness funny story I picked up this exact same copy in the charity shop over the weekend forgetting I'd already ordered it um, <laughs> and then got home and then realized I'd ordered it like 12 hours earlier so uh, I gave the other copy to Bex 
So maybe maybe we'll do a, a real life buddy read of this. Okay, and here we have William Shakespeare's Star Wars by Ian Dersher. Verily, A New Hope. So this is just like Star Wars told in the form of a play as if it was written by Shakespeare. So for example, Obi-Wan. The Force, the Force doth give a Jedi all his power, and tis a field of energy that doth surround and penetrate and bind all things together here within our galaxy. Then R2-D2 as an aside says, In hearing this wise man, I have almost my errand quite forgot. Now to my work. To Obi-Wan. Beep, meep, meep, squeak, beep, weep, squeak, whistle, meep. I think I was supposed to whistle instead of saying whistle. But yeah, this looks fun. Okay, then next up we have my, actually my current read. It's The Beautiful Poetry of Donald Trump, created by Rob Sears. So for ex uh, these are all taken from like his tweets and his speeches and stuff and rearranged into poems. So for example, we've got to stop the stupid. You know what uranium is, right? It's a thing called nuclear weapons and other things like lots of things that are done with uranium, including some bad things. I have to explain to these people they don't understand basic physics, basic mathematics, whatever you want to call it. I mean, they're like stupid. Let's do as well. Hot little girl in high school. I'm a very compassionate person with a very high IQ. Just think, in a couple of years, I'll be dating you. It must be a pretty picture, you dropping to your knees. Come here, I'll show you how life works, please. Beautiful. Oh, uh, this is this one was Bex's favourite because she read it when, when we got back. Get the oil, get the oil, get the oil. You heard me. I would take the oil. I know, it's crude. Okay, here we have Rupi Kaur, The Sun and Her Flowers. This has obviously been a super popular one on Booktube. I'm fully expecting not to like it, to be honest. Um, but I have, I have my reasons for that. Um, it's mainly because, basically, my reason for expecting not to like this is that everyone who says they like this Set, like prefaces it by saying I don't really normally read poetry but I like this one and then everyone that does read a lot of poetry tends to not like it very much but we'll see we'll I mean it's a nice quality book and I paid a pound for it so okay then we have how it works the mum uh, this is one of the little penguin books uh, penguin ladybird books by J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris so these are that ladybird books aimed at adults the mum gets lots of help from her little ones Daisy is helping to move the laundry basket away from her mum she has done this 14 times in the last five minutes. Very helpful, thank you, Daisy. So yeah, those are always a lot of fun. This wasn't from the charity shop, actually. Bex gave this to me. Uh, she bought it, and I think she might be buying a copy for herself as well, but she did read it as well. This is Philip Pullman, The Adventures of John Blake, uh, Mystery of the Ghost Ship, art by Fred Fordham. And basically, Philip Pullman is one of my favorite authors, but it's also one of her favorite authors as well. So she saw this and thought of me, but I think also wanted to read it herself. So uh, yeah, she gave me this. I'm very excited. Here we have Roald Dahl's Fantastic Mr. Fox, the official screenplay by Wes Anderson and Noah Baumbach. And uh, yeah, it is what it sounds like. It's the screenplay for Fantastic Mr. Fox. I'm, I'm kind of slowly co collecting like all of Roald Dahl's books. So every time I see a screenplay for one of the films, I've been picking those up as well. So I will read this shortly. Not, not my favorite Roald Dahl story, I have to say, but... Uh, uh, I'll be interested in reading the screenplay for sure. Okay, then we have Instagrammer Cats, uh, and this is by... It just says Lanu, but when I put it on Goodreads, it did give me an author's name as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just basically Instagram photos of cats, and then a few quotes here and there. But mostly just Instagram photos of cats. So uh, I thought that'd be nice, because you know, I love me a cat. Speaking of which, I don't know where he is. Here we have Asimov's Mysteries by the world best-selling author of iRobot. So Asimov is one of the authors who I just want to read everything they've ever published. With Asimov, it's going to be a particular challenge because I think he's done about 300. So every time I see Asimov books in charity shops, I uh, pick them up. So I also got A Whiff of Death and uh, Beck said she liked the cover of this. So I like the actual aesthetic of the book in general because it's one of these old sci-fi ones, you know. Tiny print as always with Asimov, but uh, I really enjoy reading this stuff. So I look forward to getting to these. Oh, then we have another How It Works. This is How It Works, The Sister. I'll, I guess I'll give you another line from it. Are you asleep yet? Maisie asks her older brother for the 48th time since they went to bed three hours ago. He is not, and it is now midnight. He is woken by his little sister just before five o'clock the next morning. She has thought of a new question. Are you awake yet? Bloody sisters. I don't know, I can't relate. I've got a half-sister, but she was ten years older than me, so, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm slowly gathering all of those. Then here we have Stephen King, Dreamcatcher. It's one of the few King novels that I haven't read. 
Uh, oh, and it's set in Derry, Maine as well. In fact, it's basically it from the... <laughs> in Derry, Maine, four young boys once stood together and did a brave thing, something that changed them in ways they hardly understand. A quarter of a century later, the boys are men who have gone their separate ways. So, yeah, it, it is it. Though they still get together once a year to go hunting in the north woods of Maine, but this time is different. This time a man comes stumbling into their camp, lost, disoriented, and muttering about lights in the sky. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Another one to go in my King collection. So I believe that's it. The only other thing is I did also get a Frank Sinatra vinyl. Actually, I will show you what else I got because I'm quite proud of this. This is the Green Fairy book by Andrew Lang. Uh, a, a Folio Society edition in the slipcase. Look. Uh, you know, green pages. You can't actually see that because of the light. Oh, no, they're white there, but green on the top. Uh... Really, really nice look. Really nice interiors. The only problem is somebody has written on it somewhere. Where did they write on it? There we go. So someone's written on it. But uh, they sold this for, for two pounds, which is about three three US dollars. And I looked it up and it's worth, well, it's, it's selling on eBay for about 40 to 60 pounds. So that's why I bought it, because I thought I could probably sell it for more. And I'm actually tempted to start doing this with charity shops, because even like, this one, the Rupee Car one, for a pound. I'm sure this has got to be going for more than a pound. And so, like, and even, like, the little Ladybird books, if they sell for a pound, you can probably sell them for about three pounds. So you can make a bit of a profit on them. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking I might start doing that, especially if I can find something like this that I can make, like, a decent chunk of money on. I might actually get into the book dealing world. We'll see. And if I do, by the way, I'm planning on starting an eBay store called Dane Reads or whatever. And then that'll just be for selling books. So also when I unhaul books, uh, particularly to get some feedback and stuff, but eventually to sort of start buying and selling them, you know. Seems like it could be a nice little earner. I don't know. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you in the next haul. Goodbye. All right, a few things came in the post that I wasn't necessarily expecting. I knew I'd order them, but I didn't know when slash if they'd get here. So I've got this, which is Tilly and the Wall by Leo Lioni which uh, this is a children's book and basically I've always wanted to get this book because there's a song I like and it has a sample of a small child reading this book so I thought I'd buy it so I could read it uh, and the song by the way is A Fever, A Darkness, A Spindle and A Necklace by Bright Eyes then we have this from Wordery damn this is really cool Terry Pratchett's Small Gods a Discworld graphic novel adapted by Ray Friesen Damn, I'm excited about that. How cool is that? Alright. I suspect my girlfriend might want to read this, actually. Cool. Alright. This is really nice as well. Really nice quality. I'm excited about this one. Mm. Okay, I have one book to update you on, and I actually mentioned it earlier in this video. It is Horns by Joe Hill. Uh, Bex has finished reading it, and she enjoyed it, and so now it's back in my hands. I can add it to my currently reading pile, and I shall get to it soon. But um, I do actually have Strange Weather by Joe Hill to read first. So, yeah, uh, for my, my cat pick my TBR again. I like it when he does that. All right. All right, we're going hands-free on this one. Uh, hands-free, mic-free, that's what I mean. Uh, I've, I've received this in the post. So, uh, let's see. So this is uh, Captivate the Science of Succeeding with People by Vanessa Van Edwards, Behavioural Investigator at the Science of People Research Lab. And uh, yeah, this is like a big business book. I need to uh, write uh, like a SparkNote style summary of this for one of my clients. Uh, so yes, there is that. And the other thing is this, which I got at a random train station. They had a, like a book exchange where you could pick a book up and leave some money behind and stuff. And so I picked up Alien by Alan Dean Foster. So this is obviously the novelization of uh, the movie, or at least I believe it's a novelization of the movie rather than a movie based on the, the novel. But uh, yeah, yeah, novelization by Alan Dean Foster. Then we have here also by Alan Dean Foster, Midworld and Dark Star, and Midworld is uh, a good book, I enjoyed it, and also Todd the Librarian's favourite book. Alright guys, we're going freestyle, uh, freehanded style, I have just washed my hair, so sorry about that, there is Big E as well, and uh, yeah, it is the end of a month, and I feel like I should get this uh, this haul out, and I don't want to faff around getting all my setup done, when there's there's no new books to 
to mention. Oh god, it's gone floofy. So on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought about them. I'm also potentially up for buddy reads, although there is a chance that I've already read the books as well. So there is that. Uh, yeah, uh, hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.